So here we are <laughs> again at Rosedale in New South Wales and I'm Joan Corbett and I'm about to record the second of a series of short videos about my family. This video is going to focus on Margaret Corbett. The first was about her husband Percy Corbett and I outlined quite a lot about Percy's biography. Unfortunately, though I guess typical of the times, I know less about Margaret's life story, but I do know some wonderful things and I believe that had I got to know my grandmother Margaret better, I would have liked her a great deal, as did others. So we're going to start with some photos and a biography of Margaret Corbett and then some reflections from people who knew her much better than we did, we Australian Corbett family. So Margaret Corbett was born Margaret Morrison, in 1892 in Ormston, Quebec, and she was schooled locally. Her father, David Morrison, was a minister of local churches, as was Percy's father. Um, she did uh, attend McGill University and took out a Bachelor of Arts in 1913. She became a teacher of French and she taught in both Montreal and in Paris for some time. So Morrison, Margaret Morrison, was teaching in Paris when she visited Oxford and was reacquainted with Percy Elwood Corbett, who had been at McGill at the same time and was by then studying at Oxford with a Rhodes Scholarship. They had not been necessarily friends at McGill, but having re-met in England became... Uh, a couple and married and stayed married the rest of their lives. So they were married in Beauharnois in Quebec, Canada, which was the home at that time of her parents, married in 1921, and went back to Oxford for a period following that. Margaret had two children, David Corbett, our father, and uh, our aunt Helen, who was two years older than David, uh, and so life of the family around Percy's job and the raising of two children was probably pretty typical of those times in the 1920s and 30s. Margaret did continue to teach through parts of the rest of her life, uh, but her career is not as well documented, not surprisingly, uh, compared to Percy's, who was a much more public life. The, the uh, Corbett's returned to Montreal in about nineteen twenty four. And the family life seems to have focused uh, on the summer house at Magog. They had bought and built a place near Lake Memphra Magog at Magog, and it was supposed to be their permanent residence, but it pretty quickly became difficult living there in the winters, especially with two small children, I imagine. And <laughs> So they moved into town in the winters and Lake Memphremagog became the summer place and uh, my father's fond memories of it are probably partly about being away from school and able to pursue some adventures with uh, friends there. Um, Margaret was known for being a great uh, maker of quilts and a great... Um, maker of hooked rugs 
and her skills as a craftswoman were admired by friends, including Agnes Fisher from the neighbouring property and um, her and Margaret's dear friend Marjorie Mitchell, who also had a house nearby. So these memories come through very distant connections to us in Australia. We weren't there often enough to know these sorts of things about Margaret until much later on, indeed, until after she died. But let's go back a bit. In 1943, Percy Corbett had decided to move to the United States. And so um, uh, Margaret's life was shifted to America along with Percy, and she lived for many years in uh, Princeton or just outside of the township where Princeton is. The house that Percy and Margaret lived in outside of Princeton was known as Ringo's and it is a place that I remember because we visited uh, there a couple of times uh, when my sister Jenny and I were teenagers. It was a lovely place and had a sense of countryside more than of town and the birds used to feed just outside a window uh, and uh, there was a very peaceful sense around this property. The reason that I say I think I would have liked my grandmother very well if I'd known her better is because others who knew her said that she was very much the social figure in the family. Percy was quite shy, but Margaret was not only outgoing but very charming and she spoke French fabulously, so that meant that in their years in Europe she had a role to play in connecting them with people that might not otherwise come into their life there. Um, and she had a lot of um, empathy for people, I think, and uh, warmth about her. So as much as I know about my grandmother, Margaret Corbett, I feel fondly of, even though she wasn't a big part of my life. And that's the story for Margaret Corbett.